Yeah, I just want to point out real quick that Alliance Defending Freedom, otherwise known as ADF, is not what some of these right-wingers try to make it out to be. I wanted to know who was behind all of these anti-abortion and anti-trans bills, so I did my research, and what I found is absolutely horrifying, and every American needs to know. I consider myself a well-read person. What anti-trans, anti-abortion bills are out there? I'm trying to understand, trying to check the things off my boxes so my social credit score goes up. Well, obviously, this was made before the Supreme Court ruling. This aged like fine milk. And let's be clear, there are several states that have put restrictions, severe restrictions, on abortion. Every article about these bills that I found, three letters kept popping up. ADF, over and over again. But who are they? ADF stands for Alliance Defending Freedom. They're the world's largest legal organization committing to protecting religious freedom. So an organization that wants to protect religious freedom, all religious freedom, I'm missing the danger here. No, it's freedom for all biblical religions. When they ask you to join, they say it's to defend your God-given and constitutionally protected freedoms. But it's not religious freedom. It's Christian supremacy. Let me show you. Oh, isn't that rich? Christian supremacy. Look at the dollar bill in God We Trust. In God We Trust was first added to some of our money in the late 1800s and then was added to the rest of our money during McCarthyism of the 50s. It's the same period that we added under God to the pledge. Trying to figure out how a country formed, founded, let's call it, by Christians has Christian supremacy. We allow people like this to talk and denigrate everything we know. Well, as some of the founding fathers were Christian, not all of them were. And they knew that you couldn't combine church and state. They knew that we had to have our laws be secular. You know, that's why originally In God We Trust wasn't on our money. Now, do we live in a Christian, white supremacist, patriarchal, cis-heteronormative society? Yeah, but that doesn't mean we double down on that stuff and, and codify that stuff into law. When religion and state are separate, which the First Amendment is, you know, that's what that's supposed to mean, that, that religion and state are separate, it allows for more freedom of religion. You can believe more what you want. You're not locked down to any one religion. But there are so many people on the right who seem to think that religious freedom means the freedom to practice a Bible-based religion. It's kind of weird. ADF is one of the most organized and influential Christian legal groups in the country. Mm -hmm. This is your classic hit piece trying to get the Southern Poverty Law Center to pick it up so they can cancel the organization. The Southern Poverty Law Center has had their eyes on the ADF for a long time. What are you saying? Get on the trending page of Twitter and trigger all the snowflakes. Religious liberty, opposition to abortion, and opposition to same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. When it comes to religion and public institution, one of their goals is for Christianity to be reflected in the U.S. legal system. Since these people want to abolish all more what should we use for our legal system? Usually, religion's got a set of morality. That's kind of the principles of it, right? Morality does not have to be only connected to religion. We can have morals without religion. You can have even spirituality without having religion. Lots of definitions of spirituality, but you don't need religion to have morals. You're basically saying, well, if, you, if it's not based on religion, then, then I don't understand. It's, it's just weird, man. It's just a weird mindset. And now, having said that, there are people who seem to want to get rid of all standards, people that want to completely tear down this culture just all around because they say, well, it's a, it's a Christian, white supremacist, patriarchal, cis-heteronormative society, and we, we have to fundamentally change it. I'm like, no, we need to get rid of the the negative side effects of that culture. If you try to, to, to change it entirely, the whole thing's going to fall apart. And that's not going to do anyone any good. Hold on a second. Before you run to the comments, I know there's zealots in every religion. However, religion gives a veneer, a morality, keeps people from doing things, the invisible hand that guides people. Now we don't have that. People run into stores, take whatever they want. You can't blame a rise in crime on a lack of religion. That's, that's not it. We've... Look what's happened since COVID. So many people that that are homeless now. So many people that can't afford to live. Yeah, the, the crime is going to go up. I'm not saying it's it's all that, but it's it's certainly not just because oh they're they're not religious. They don't have morals, so we need to instill religious morals into people. No, that's not the answer. Assault people at will because they're the victims. You follow me here. There's got to be some morality somewhere. 
I agree there has to be some morality somewhere, but you can't just assume that it, oh, well, it's Christian and Bible and, yeah, there, there's lots of places you can get morality from. The opposition of the LGBT community, they are in favor of homosexuality being a crime. Now, when this girl says they're in favor of making homosexuality a crime, it's hyperbolic. She's trying to trigger people who just hear sound bites. That's the point. If you actually read what the organization wants... Look, I'm just kind of going kind of on a sidetrack here a little bit, but, you know, I didn't want to admit before, I, I didn't want to look at the fact that it is kind of likely that the Supreme Court is going to make sodomy something that can be decided by the states, you know, in the Lawrence versus Texas case, which Clarence Thomas has blatantly said he wants to address along with gay marriage. The ADF does want sodomy to be criminalized. Former Texas Solicitor General Jonathan Mitchell, who is associated with ADF, referred to the 2003 decision in Lawrence versus Texas as court-invented rights. It's a tad different. And he doesn't seem to address it any further than that. He then goes on to the next subject. He, he goes into different clips of, of different things people have said, and I wanted to address this specific section. The ADF does support conversion therapy, even though on their website, you know, they, they word it all nice. That's probably what he went to. Oh, well, they say they don't support these things. And you look into it further, even on their site, and you can see that they do support these things. They try to hide their support of conversion therapy by using weaselly language. They're basically saying, well, they support anyone being able to get any kind of counseling they want, no matter what it is, which can include conversion therapy. I mean, to me, that's kind of like saying, oh, oh, I don't support uh, discrimination against people for immutable characteristics. And then turning around and saying, but but I believe that businesses should have the right to hire and fire based on anything they choose. I've seen people make that kind of argument, and it's as absurd as it sounds. The ADF is also against gay marriage and the normalization of homosexuality. But they try to make it sound wholesome and tolerant. By saying that they're informed by a biblically-based understanding of sexuality and marriage. They also promote the notion that adoption agencies should be able to discriminate against LGBT if their religion says so. So, you know, sorry, Odin's men, but on this subject uh, about the ADF, you're just wrong. Look into things a little bit more.